What is going on everybody? It's Bulls Nation Station back at it again with another one. And the Bulls, you know, they made good work of the Portland Trail Blazers. The Blazers are tanking, nobody is playing, but it was good for the Bulls just to get back on track, you know, after that very disappointing loss against Philly the other night. You know, they came back and had to blow out of their own. It was just able, you know, to get some good run and instill some confidence as Portland. They didn't have nobody playing, really. All their starters were out. And so, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the game. Zach Levine, he had an awesome game with 30-something points. Vooch played well. Kobe White has been balling. That's actually what I want to start talking it, talking about is Kobe White. You know, Kobe White, man, has been balling. And it's to the point to where he has the Bulls fans on the flip-flop. You know, they were originally talking about, let's trade Kobe White. Let's see what we can trade him for at the trade deadline. What can we get for Kobe White? Kobe's going to be the one going to now. We need to resign this dude. <laughs> I mean, Kobe has been showing so much improvement this year. It just goes to show people grow at their own rates. People improve at their own rates. I mean, in this, what, fourth season, people was talking about how much he's improved on his defense, how much he improved on his ball handling. You remember the season prior, Kobe White could barely bring it past half court without getting ripped. To now, he's creating plays off the dribble with crossovers behind his back. He's showing good vision, and that's just awesome. And it just seems like the more and more the season, you know, fares and goes on, he's just constantly improving. You know, he's becoming more of a defender. Uh, coach said after the game, after the last game, that Kobe White has turned into a two-way player to where... He can trust Kobe White out there playing defense. And as you've seen against the Trailblazers, you know, he had a couple of nice steals. So Kobe White, man, he's been awesome. You've been seeing Kobe White in way more closing lineups, more so now than before. And that's another reason why, you know, the Bulls were cool with getting rid of um, Goran Dragic because, you know, generally people were saying before the season, Goran Dragic was going to take up more minutes than Kobe. But Kobe didn't drink uh, all of Goran Dragic's minutes. So, you know, hopefully Dragic is doing his thing over in Milwaukee. But back to Kobe White. If he can stay shooting at the rate he's been shooting these past few games, past week, two weeks, you have to re-sign Kobe. You have to have him back on his team. You know, he's been conquering all the knocks that we've been putting on him as far as dribbling, as far as defense. Now the next obstacle for Kobe to become a complete player is to bring that that consistency up you know if he could bring that consistency up and hit more of his shots at a way better rate then he will be tremendous for the bulls i mean a great player to have coming off the bench you know to shoot threes to compliment demar to compliment zach and vooch you know kobe will be that type of player so you know shout out to kobe white man he's been awesome He's been, uh, a lot of people talk about how great he is in the locker room and how he can connect the younger players with the older players. He knows how to talk to everybody. He just keeps that locker room going. So, you know, shout out to Kobe White, man, for really changing the course of him, on, not only on this team, but in the NBA. So next thing I want to talk about really is the Los Angeles Lakers coming up. We got a game against them. You know, Patrick Beverly been talking trash on this podcast already. As you know, that was the, his most recent team he played for before he came to the Bulls. And so he really wants to, you know, go and leave an impression on the Lakers saying he wants to make sure the Lakers don't make the playoffs. And it's ironic he says that as the Bulls play the Lakers two times, you know, in one week. You know, we play the Lakers, you know, Sunday, then we have a game against the Clippers, and then we play the Lakers later on in the week. But expect for Patrick Beverly to bring one of them Patrick Beverly type of shows to Los Angeles, you know. Hopefully that'll help lead us to a win, but he's going to be, you know, fired up for that game, and that's awesome to see because, you know, Patrick Beverly likes to talk trash. And, you know, DeMar DeRozan loves going against L.A., you know. DeRozan was supposed to be the guy to sign with the Lakers until they curved him for Westbrook, which wasn't there anymore. It just shows how bad of a decision that was. But, 
yeah, DeRozan, he's going to be looking to put on a show. You know, Zach, he does his thing going to, UC, going to UCLA. He loves playing in L.A. And Caruso, you know, that's his former team. He's back in healthy. So I expect this to be a good fight. You know, the Los Angeles Lakers, they've actually been playing some pretty good basketball. Um, Anthony Davis, he's been playing really good. And so I expect the Bulls to kind of play Davis the same way they've been guarding um, Embiid as to when he touched the ball, you trap and you run out to shooters. So hopefully the Bulls can understand that and they can um, come out and get a good win. It's going to be an early game. Yeah, and I expect this to be a fun, you know, a fun game as the, both teams are trying to, you know, be established in this play-in playoff race. So, you know, with the Lakers, they're fighting for their lives literally as to one loss can drop them all the way down and one win can bring them all the way up so yeah i'm definitely looking forward to seeing this game and yeah i'm gonna talk to you guys later don't forget to subscribe as i'm gonna keep y'all updated and i'm gonna holler at you guys later i'm out